Wilson, in the last like little uh, section here, I want to ask you specifically, and we're going to start talking about this a lot more on the show, but last April uh, in Beijing, leaders gathered together uh, with Xi Jinping and uh, they celebrated what was then in April 2019, the second year anniversary of the Belt and Road Initiative. And basically, right. Belt and Road is this, just to let people know a bit, it's this enormous infrastructure project, uh, an economic project headed by the Chinese that will essentially connect Africa through the old Silk Road routes, uh, Central Asia, uh, key parts of Europe. It has major geostrategic implications for Africa. Um, yes. And I just want to get your sense of it. What do you think? Is this a generally positive initiative for Africa or no? Right. Okay. In the short term, it actually is not because it oh. continues it continues exploiting Africa's resources by acquiring resources from Africa and taking it to to fuel uh, China's uh, industrialization and growth and creating wealth in China in the short term. But in the long term, it actually will benefit African countries because what China has been doing, which the U.S has not been doing, Britain has not been doing, France has not been doing, is building infrastructure in African countries, roads, bridges, tunnels, railways. China built a rail linking Ethiopia to Djibouti on the coast at a cost of $4.5 billion. You don't hear that kind of investment coming from a Western country in Africa. China built a rail linking the western part of Kenya all the way through Nairobi to the coast in Mombasa. I think that project was worth $1.6 billion. China has built billions of dollars worth of infrastructure in other African countries, and in Ethiopia in particular, and in West African countries, in Angola, resource-rich uh, countries like that. Now, why do I say it's going to bear fruit, not only for China, but for Africa in the long run? Because as the old colonial powers have been sleeping and the new colonial power, which the United States is in Africa, has also been sleeping, China has been thinking, China has been playing the long game. So what do I mean by that? This year in July, what's called the Africa Continental Free Trade Area is going to be launched. 54 African countries have already signed and ratified the agreement, which means it's going to be one of the largest free trade zones anywhere in the world. It's going to reduce barriers. That's what they're going to start with, eliminating barriers. It's going to boost intra-Africa trade, which right now is only by 20%. If you compare with Europe, intra-European trade is about 70%. So it's going to lower the cost of doing trade. And of course, since China is already a player in more than 40 African countries, it means China is going to benefit from this increased intra-African trade. So that's why I say it's going to play, it benefit both China and Africa in the long run. And for Africa, it's going to do another thing as well. It's going to allow African countries, and now collectively, to increase their bargaining power with the West. Because now with a huge free, free trade zone, they're going to be able to say, if you want to enter this market, well, we have some demands as well. <laughs> so that's going to be, even the World Bank referred to it as a potential game changer. Does this, as a final uh, thought, does this, uh, you're, you've also talked a lot about in uh, the work of Samir Amin, does this link to yes. his idea of, yeah, yeah. could you elaborate on that? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, because it's Samir Min, who died a few years ago, uh, was, I think, one of my favorite economists, actually, and African intellectuals. His argument was that you can, be, you can have industries without industrializing, which means you're actually a subcontractor for Western companies. In order for you to really industrialize, you have to have an integrated economic system meaning you use your domestic raw material for your domestic factories. And these factories supply 
products to other factories. Others are for input and others for, for output. So it's integrated. And that's what the uh, Africa uh, uh, Continental Free Trade Agreement may eventually allow, allow African countries to do. And do you, I always have to ask this now, because these power imbalances and dealing with capitalism in so many different ways, whether we're talking about actually the late stage rot in the kind of imperial core or the ongoing exploitation of Africa, multipolarity, all of these things. What though, where is the ecological dimension in all of this? Because we also know, yeah, where is that? Thank you for asking that. Um, Increasingly, uh, African activists are becoming much more conscious when it comes on the environment because they see what is happening in other parts of the world. And I'm happy to say that this is also to be, going to be a major uh, role that the uh, 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 Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement will be addressing. So yes, absolutely. As you know, in the past, African countries were dumping ground for toxic, toxic uh, materials that could not be disposed of in the West. All they had to do was give a few million dollars to some corrupt leader, and they would allow this toxic waste to actually be shipped <laughs> and dumped in some African countries. I know it happened in some West African countries. I know it used to happen in Somalia on the East Coast. So that will no longer be tolerated once the uh, Africa Free Trade Continental uh, area becomes effective. Milton Alamadi, we treasure you. We honor you. Uh, you're one of our mentors and guides. And uh, please stay safe and healthy. Oh, and we'll same see- to you. Same to all yeah. of you. And I'm always <laughs> delighted to be on your show. I'm sorry we can't do it in the studio, but oh, I look man. forward Me too. <laughs> to normalcy. Me too. I look Stay strong, to, all of you. Stay, stay strong, and I look for I look forward to the normalcy of you in the studio and and us uh, getting our our uh, occasional uh, tea and coffee together too. And so, thanks. thank you, Carmen. I have to add one other thing. One other Please. thing before you run. Please. Cuba is now deploying Cuban doctors and healthcare workers to Italy. Okay, we're going to be talking about about that in the post game. (laughs) We're going to. It's about time that somebody says thank you, Cuba. (laughs) Thank you, Cuba. (laughs) Yeah, Cuba is a heroic country. Oh, yeah, absolutely heroic country. So much. Stay well. Thank you, okay. Thank you, Cuba. Thank you, Milton. Have a good one, Milton. See you. Everybody, please go follow Milton Alamadi. Find all of his work. It's just. I learned so much from Milton. Yeah. And it's always such an honor having him on the show. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.